Open up hailing frequencies to send this message to all channels. CNNR presents Blur Trek is back with all the latest news about Star Trek Section 31. <laughs> Greetings, nerds and fellow Trekkers. This is Will Polk, host of CNNR presents Blur Trek and producer and co-host of the Cine Nerd Podcast with our host, Sarah Beaumont. Thank you so much for joining me on this first episode of Cine Nerd Presents Blur Trek in 2024. And we get to kick off this new season of Blur Trek with exciting news as we learned today that the Section 31 movie started production in Toronto. That's right. Uh, released from the Star Trek.com website as well as the Star Trek social media channels. We see uh, Academy Award-winning actress Michelle Yeoh, who uh, in section Star Trek Section 31, she plays the, our favorite character, Emperor Philippa Giorgio, who was first introduced in Star Trek Discovery. And she is joining the organization, she has joined the organization of Section 31. And uh, the, the tagline from Star Trek.com says that in Section 31, Emperor Philip Giorgio, the fan favorite character, Yo first introduced in Star Trek Discovery, joins a secret division of Starfleet tasked with protecting the United Federation of Planets. She also must face the sins of her past. So that's the official tagline that was given in, in the Star Trek social media and webpage today about this new original film that uh, did go into production and will be uh, on Star uh, Paramount Plus is going to be streaming. It's not going to be a theatrical release uh, it, whenever this film does eventually come out, most likely 2025. Uh, I mean, I know they're filming early. They're filming right now, which are expected to go about six weeks, according to uh, some of the production sources. But uh, even in best case scenario, probably you know, if it does come out, it may be end of this year, but most likely we're looking at next. But along with that, we get some exciting news uh, about some of the cast of uh, who will be joining in this Section 31 movie. And so uh, we learned that uh, in addition to Michelle Yeoh, uh, the, the cast of the CBS Studios production includes Omari Hardwick, who uh, from left to right uh, was in Powers. Uh, Casey Roll, she was in Hannibal. Uh, Emmy Award winner Sam Richardson, who was in Ted Lasso. Sven Rock, who was in One Piece, which was an excellent live action adaptation. If you haven't seen that on Netflix, I recommend you definitely go check it out. And also, we review that here on the podcast channel as well. So, check out our reviews there. Uh, Robert Kaczynski, who was in Pacific Rim. Umberly Gonzalez, who was and Guinea and Georgia, and James Hiroki Lyo, who was in Barry. So those are the cast members that were introduced today in addition to learning about the film going into production. One notable person that was not on the list was Shazad Latif, who played uh, Ash Tyler in Star Trek Discovery season one and two. Uh, at the end, uh, spoiler, I don't, I won't spoil what happens to that particular character because I know many of you haven't watched Star Trek Discovery, but he was a very integral character in the first two seasons of that show. And um, his character had a very important role in Section 31 uh, in the second season. So uh, as if, you know, if, if you're new to Star Trek, let me just quickly explain what Section 31 is. So Section 31 was an organization that uh, was a part of the original Starfleet Charter when the, when the organization was founded in Article 14, Section 31. We first see them in the Star Trek universe in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine Season 6 episode, Inquisition, where uh, they try to recruit one of the characters on that show, Dr. Bashir, into the organization now the section 31 if you're familiar with star trek or i mean the, as far as the real world equivalency it will probably be like the cia it's a secret intelligence organization um and uh you know use in the star trek universe uh the the, the analogous organizations is the romulan tal shiar uh, and also the obsidian order in the cardassian union so these organizations were just basically secret organizations within these governments to basically protect against extreme 
hazards and risk um, from internal and external uh, threats to to those uh, particular governments. So. Uh, Section 31, as I noted, was first introduced in Deep Space Nine, but it's also been shown in uh, other iterations, other shows of Star Trek, including uh, Picard, uh, Lower Decks. Uh, it also even showed up in the um, alternate universe in the Kelvin universe uh, in Star Trek Into Darkness, so uh, and, and also Star Trek Enterprise. So it's it's been a part of, of this the fabric of the Star Trek universe for for some time now. And so this uh, movie will um, uh, be the continuation of Emperor Giorgio's boy, uh, life in this organization. Now, we have no details as far as what the script says or anything like that. Uh, there were some things that happened in Star Trek Discovery Season 3 that may have an impact on this. Again, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't watched it, but if you have watched Star Trek Discovery, uh, you know uh, what the uh, what happened with this particular character uh, in that in that um, season, and so um, it's very very. You know, again, we we you know, this is a fan favorite character, and we got um, because of the uh, popularity of this character, uh, and also just the sheer awesomeness of Michelle Yeoh, they decided to greenlight this movie, and then once the writer strike and actor strike was over, they were able to get it into production, so that's some very exciting news about that, uh, as if it's of this recording on January 30, 2024, so uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this news in the Star Trek universe, and uh, with that, let's uh, quickly turn to some other things. I know there's been some news about Star Trek Legacy in the news recently. Uh, TV, line, TV Insider had an interview with um, Michelle Hurd, who plays, uh, plays Rafi in Star Trek Picard. Uh, of course, uh, after the third season of Star Trek Picard, uh, the way that season ended, it definitely did set up a potential uh, new series, a spinoff of that spinoff. And so... Um, Fans uh, are, have been very excited about the potential for that series. Uh, Michelle Hurd did say that if fans wanted it, uh, you know, continue to put the word out there for it. Of course, there's been a lot of petitions for Star Trek Legacy, uh, and uh, but as, as of now, as of the date of this recording, nothing has officially been uh, greenlit by the studios uh, for various reasons. Uh, one, uh, of course, there's been the strikes. Two, uh, Paramount, uh, it, their ownership, and the, 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 there's been a lot of rumors about uh, what's going to happen with Paramount, the studios that produces all the Star Trek content. Uh, there was a rumor late last year that uh, there was a potential of them uh, being acquired by uh, uh, one company, I believe it was uh, maybe Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, but also, uh, recently, Scott Ants has been rumored to be looking at uh, buying a stake or, or, buy, or acquiring Paramount Studios as well. So, uh, of course, these are all uh, early talks, speculations, nothing's, nothing's in, in moving forward at this point. But just wanted to raise that in that um, there's a lot of things on the business side that may hinder any new development of any any series of, from, from as far as Star Trek for, for the time being. Of course, we, we do have the, the Section 31 movie that is being relayed. Of course, uh, Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds uh, is in production for its third season. Uh, Star Trek Discovery, of course, is going to be wrapping up this year. And, um, and of course, we get to our last little bit of news. It's just Star Trek uh, Prodigy. Uh, of course, it's no longer with Paramount Plus. It got uh, canceled there. Uh, Netflix did acquire it. Uh, they did finish the second season of Star Trek Prodigy uh, and did release all 20 episodes of the first season right around the holiday season on Netflix and it actually debuted globally in the top 10 uh, in all markets across the Netflix platform whether it was United States, United Kingdom, it, but anywhere where Netflix is um, available uh the show debuted in the top 10 of the kids list for um when when the, those minute when star trek prodigy dropped so of course you know the more minutes and more eyeballs get on star trek prodigy 
Uh, of course, they haven't given us a date as far as when uh, the, the show is going to be released as of this recording. But of course, keep an eye on it because it will be coming out uh, hopefully at some point this year. And hopefully if it gets very good response, uh, we'll get a third season of that show as well. So lots going on in the Star Trek universe. Let me know what your thoughts are about the topics I discussed here today. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast here. We've got some exciting things coming up. In, in addition to Blur Trek, uh, we're going to be starting our reviews of Reacher this week, as well as Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Amazon Prime as well, and also Avatar The Last Airbender later this month. So we've got a lot of content coming to us. So follow us for, here on YouTube, or if you're listening to us on the audio, subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts via audio feeds by going to our website at www.scenenerdpodcast.com and be sure to rate comment and subscribe and we surely will do appreciate all the support with that live long and prosper